We've arrived at our next campsite, and it's sunny, 75 degrees, and not a cloud in the sky. We were not expecting this. We tend to think of the desert as a dry, arid place, but that isn't always the case. We started the day off this morning in some of the most sparse, barren desert I have ever seen. Even the sagebrush barely manages to get a foothold here. It's mostly ashy soil and rock. We were out here yesterday to visit the A6 intruder crash site, so if you haven't seen the previous episode, be sure to check that out. times I've got sort of a vague sense. I know on the highway, uh, when I'm doing about 60 to 65 miles per hour, I can get about 25 miles to the gallon. That's with the car fully loaded with everything on the roof, everything in the back. I fueled up Monday afternoon, and today is Thursday morning, and so far in all of the travels we've done so far, uh, I've used less than three quarters of a tank of gas. Obviously, we're not traveling huge amount of miles. Uh, in some cases, on some of these rocky desert roads, we're going one, two, three miles per hour at times, and other times, five, 10, maybe 15 miles an hour. So it's not a lot of miles, but we're out there most of the day traveling. As you move into the southeastern corner of the state, opportunities to gas up are even more sparse than the vegetation. In my various trips out here, I found gas at Christmas Valley, Rome, Jordan Valley, and Fields. I've heard there's also gas at Plush, though I've never refueled there myself. It's not unusual to need a detour of 20 or 30 miles in order to top up your tank when you can, because you just won't make it to the next gas otherwise. out here. Just unbelievable terrain, unbelievable topography. And look at this very plain, simple gravel road we're driving down. Anyone can come out here and visit these areas. We've sort of left the endless sagebrush behind and got into just some extensive sort of prairie grassland sort of area. Just golden grasses stretching off into the hills. It's just beautiful. Well, the prairie soon gave way to more sagebrush, but it's still lovely out here. Tonight, we'll be camping at the base of that high ridge line you see in the distance, and tomorrow, we'll be driving right on up and over it. A 
Along the way, we found a historical site, though it's not quite homesteading pioneer era. This is part of what used to be Camp Hart Mountain, a civilian conservation corps project dating to the late 1930s when they were establishing the Hart Mountain Antelope Refuge. I almost never have to stake down this tent in any way, shape, or form, but there's a pretty good breeze coming across there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two stakes just on this side, just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. from there over to here gives me a wind block for the tent. Sometimes you think you're alone, but you're not alone. What is it about camping next to water? It seems to be a universal preference for people everywhere to camp next to a creek, river, or lake, even if we have no intention of using that water in any way. Is it some vestigial instinct that lies within each of us? I wonder if, on some primordial level, we feel comforted being next to water, even if we don't really need it. It's rare to find a campsite next to water in the desert, and this will be the only night of this entire trip where we'll have the opportunity. What a lovely oasis amidst the dusty, arid expanses of sagebrush.
Well, I give up. It's five in the morning. I wouldn't mind sleeping for another hour, but uh, the wind has just been going all night, and uh, I've had enough of it. I got up, got everything packed up and ready to go into the car, took care of a little work with some memory cards and some other things. So it was good productive time this morning. Now we'll just wait for that sun to come up. I don't think we were expecting this. So I moved the car yet again so that I could sort of get some protection. The wind is coming from that direction and blowing the rain in can't set up the awning because there's just too much wind. So I'm quickly I'm gonna make some coffee and some breakfast and go sit back in the tent. Uh, just trying to get my coffee made. I got soaked. Even moving the car around, the wind shifted a bit, the rain is just blowing in sideways. Everything got wet. Uh, especially me. And finally I got the coffee made. I threw together a breakfast of uh, I got some yogurt again with some uh, Grizzlies Bees Knees granola, and I've added some extra berries and nuts to that as well. Make it a nice hearty breakfast. It's really nice having this space to get into when the weather is bad. Back when I was just sleeping in the car, I would have had no choice but to basically just sit in the driver's seat. Here, I can get up, move around, do stuff. Run my little heater. Could be worse. Well, just hanging out in the van with Jason and waiting to see how the morning develops here a little bit. The mud out there is just like instant clay. I walked across camp and I ended up with an inch of mud on the bottom of my boots. Well, it's, it's funny because we got here yesterday and it was like 75 degrees out. And now look what we've got here. We were not expecting this. Uh, this first little part of the road we're driving on uh, basically lake bed mud and uh, it is slippery when wet. 